Good afternoon, Good afternoon St. Mary's. Mary's. We hope you're all safe and well. Jessica and I are wanting to share one of our favourite things that we like to do in the Warriner household, especially from when they've been babies to growing up. Mm -hmm. And we've loved sharing all sorts of books, haven't we? So today we're going to read... Matilda! It's one of your favourites. One of my favourites. <laughs> the Reader of Books. It's a funny thing about mon mothers and fathers. Even when their own child is the most disgusting little blister you could ever imagine, they still think that he or she is wonderful. Some parents go further. They become so blinded by adoration, they manage to convince themselves their child has qualities of genius. Well, there is nothing very wrong with all this. It's the way of the world. It is only when the parents begin telling us about the brilliance of their own revolting offspring that we start shouting, bring us a basin, we're going to be sick. School teachers suffer a good deal from having to listen to this sort of twaddle from proud parents, but they usually get their own back when the time comes to write the end of term reports. If I were a teacher, I would cook up some real scorchers for the children of doting parents. Your son, Maximilian, I would write, is a total washout. I hope you and your family business, I hope you have a family business you can push him into when he leaves school because he sure as heck won't get a job anywhere else. Or if I was feeling lyrical that day, I might write, it is a curious truth that grasshoppers have their hearing organs on the insides of their abdomen. Your daughter, Vanessa, judging by what she's learned this term, has no hearing organs at all. I might even delve deep into natural history and say, the periodical Cicada spends six years as a grub underground and no more than six days as a free creature of sunlight and air. Your son Wilfred has spent six years as a grub in this school and we are still waiting for him to emerge from the cryolysis. A particularly poisonous little girl might sting me into saying, Fiona has the same glacial beauty as an iceberg, but unlike the iceberg, she has absolutely nothing below the surface. I think I might enjoy writing end of term reports for the stinks in my class, but enough of that, we have to get on. Occasionally, one comes across parents who take the opposite line, who show no interest at all in their children. And these, of course, are far worse than the doting ones. Mr and Mrs Wormwood were two such parents. They had a son called Michael, a daughter called Matilda. And the parents looked upon Matilda in particular as nothing more than a scab. A scab is something you might put up with until it's time to pick it off and flick it away. Mr and Mrs Wormwood looked forward enormously to the time when they could pick their little daughter off and flick her away, preferably into the next country or even further than that. It was bad enough when parents treat ordinary children as though they were scabs and bunions, but it becomes somehow a lot worse when the child in question is extraordinary. And by that, I mean sensitive and brilliant. Matilda was both of these things, but above all, she was brilliant. Her mind was so nimble and she was so quick to learn and her ability should have been obvious to even most half-witted parents. But Mr and Mrs Wormwood were both so gormless and so wrapped up in their silly little lives that they failed to notice anything unusual about their daughter. To tell you the truth, I doubt they would have noticed if she crawled into the house with a broken leg. Matilda's brother Michael was a perfectly normal boy, but the sister, as I said, was something to make your eyes pop. By the age of one and a half, her speech was perfect and she knew as many words as most grown-ups. The parents, instead of applauding her, called her a noisy chatterbox and told her sharply that small girls should be seen and not heard. By the time she was three, Matilda had taught herself to read by studying newspapers and magazines that lay around the house. At the age of four, she could read fast and well and she naturally began hankering after books. The only book in the whole of this enlightened household was something called Easy Cooking, belonging to her mother. And when she had read this from cover to cover and had learned all the recipes by heart, she decided she wanted something more interesting. Daddy, she said. Do you think you could buy me a book? A book, he said. What do you want a flaming book for? To read, Daddy. What's wrong with the telly, for heaven's sake? We've got a lovely telly with a 12 inch screen and now you come asking for a book. You're getting spoilt, girl. 
Nearly every weekend afternoon, nearly every weekday afternoon, Matilda was often left alone in her house. Her brother, five years older than her, went to school. Her father went to work and her mother went out playing bingo in the town eight miles away. Mrs Wormwood was hooked on bingo and played it five afternoons a week. On the afternoon of the day when her father had refused to buy her a book, Matilda set out all by herself to walk to the public library in the village. When she arrived, she introduced herself to the librarian, Mrs Phelps. She asked if she might sit a while and read a book. Mrs Phelps, slightly taken aback at the arrival of such a tiny girl, unaccompanied by a parent, nevertheless told her she was very welcome. Where are the children's books, please? Matilda asked. They're over there on those lower shelves, Mrs Phelps told her. Would you like me to help you find a nice one with lots of pictures in it? No, thank you, Matilda said. I'm sure I can manage. From then on, every afternoon, as soon as her mother had left for bingo, Matilda would toddle down to the library. The walk only took ten minutes, and this allowed her two glorious hours sitting quietly by herself in a cosy corner devouring one book after another. When she had read every single children's book in the place, she started wandering round in search of something else. Mrs Phelps 